Oh, cry. Today, cryptocurrencies. So the real question is, what, what do you want about money? Want everything. <laughs> you want more. Is, is, is there anybody that wants less money? Yeah. People already have a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so here's so let's see uh, right examples like this uh, so you, you got a you got a dollar bill right so uh, that's a two dollar bill is that a thing <laughs> is there two dollar bills there's Jefferson looking kind of unhappy so uh, you know th there's this immediate problem right like uh, is a two dollar bill even a real thing so. Right, so, so they sell these special pens, and uh, apparently the pens have iodine. Uh, and iodine has a strange property that uh, if you, if I make a mark on here, and it looks kind of yellowish. So here's this is an interesting thing. It looks kind of yellow. I mean, it's probably totally invisible. Uh, it looks kind of yellowish because there was no reaction between the, uh, the the iodine and the paper. But it turns out that starch, basically any kind of uh, and so here's like a coupon for the uh, Boston Bolts. So if I draw, like so, same same marker turns really dark on contact with starch, right? So if you if, you, if there's any starch at all in the paper, it'll turn dark. And uh, they they use a special kind of paper to print paper money. Why is that? No, because it's a piece of paper right? with some words on it that are like not so so huge problem with cash. It's it's possible to fabricate cash and actually they bust people with like color laser printers periodically that make them stupid and are just photocopying cash. Because right? uh, uh, there's only one organization that's like do that. That's the government. So what you want is you want to, you want a limit on the supply. Why? Yeah, so, so I don't know, the, this happens to some government periodically that are having problems, and they're like, you know, we should just print more paper, and we'll that will solve a problem, and it doesn't actually solve a problem. So, uh, so people end up having to, so Zimbabwe won't be I hyper because they're, they're printing too much money, right? so, so uh, uh, this field of limiting supply. So, so there are some people actually hate this notion of paper money, right, that like, if it's just a piece of paper and we're, we're trusting the government's promise not to print too much, then there's effectively no limit on this one. I mean, the limit is the word of the Federal Reserve chairperson at uh, Janet Yellen at the moment. Uh, let's see, it was Richard Ben Bernanke, or uh, who was a really famous one? Alan Greenspan for like 100 years. No, uh, uh, Janet Yellen. Yeah, so, uh, so, so, this is, yeah, so, so there's got to be some limit on supply. Uh, if you don't trust the government to limit the supply, what do you do? Oh, so, so here's a cool part about uh, so gold. I uh, I have gold somewhere. I ironically I could not find it. Uh, so so th this is actually a piece of silver, believe, supposedly. I bought it on eBay. So it, it, here's a problem, right? Precious. So precious metal. So si silver is actually kind of a cool looking metal, right? It's kind of light, uh, light colored. I mean, if you compare it to a you know, piece of steel. I mean, it's got a, I, I, I can just look at this and say, yeah, that's probably not a piece of steel because steel is dark. Steel rusts, silver tarnishes, turns slowly turns black to sulfides. But uh, right, so, so you can look at the mechanical properties of the thing and kind of hopefully guesstimate what the material is. The problem is, of course, this might not be silver. This might be some other silvery metal like aluminum. Right? Aluminum is a lot lighter weight, right? So you can so if you combine the density and the appearance, you can usually get fairly close. So gold has this nice property. It's yellow. What are the other yellow metals? Pyrite, it's not actually a metal. Right? It's season, season is yellow. Or, yeah, but I mean, yeah. obviously, yeah. Brass the, the, the copper, yeah. Some alloys of copper look pretty much exactly like brass. Now, here's the other nice thing about gold is it weighs like 20 some grams per cubic centimeter, which is way higher than anything else, right? I mean, if you dilute lead, if you dilute gold, gold with lead or something cheap and heavy, it's not nearly heavy enough, it turns out. Uh, there is there is one problem. Uh, tungsten, like the stuff in old black bulbs, is uh, it's actually almost exactly the same density as gold. 
It looks totally different, though. It's just dark brown, ugly stuff, right? But uh, there have apparently been some problems where, like, in the central bank, they have these giant bars of gold that, like, that's the official, like, uh, uh, reserve. They x-ray them, and they realize the middle of that bar of gold is solid tungsten. And it's just covered in this little, and, you know, a block of tungsten has some value. You know, but nothing like gold. Uh, and, and, and so, 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 the, so it's revealed is, uh, uh, you, you want no counterfeits, and this is surprisingly hard. Uh, what, is, what is counterfeit currency? Well, like if you bought a bar of gold and it turns out to be a bar of brass, you're unhappy, right? Because different uh, price difference there. And, and the deal is like, uh, and, and these two are correlated, right? If, if there's someone to make more of these uh, than by, by counterfeiting them, then you're in trouble. Uh, apparently, like North Korea has sort of cracked the secret of like making almost undetectably good hundred dollar notes. But so, this is apparently one way they sort of fund their uh, uh, their, their activities. And uh, so, so, so the question is like, well, how do we how do we stop that? Right? Like, uh, you know, you tough to convince North Korea to do anything. And uh, I mean, so, so I mean, counterfeiting uh, is, is just a hard a hard thing to, to work around. Uh, right, so so we have uh, yeah, so I mean we have the pen that totally passes the pen test. It looks like it's got the holograms. And just like you know, there's a certain amount of effort that you can invest in a piece of paper, uh, and then uh, so so here's the other big problem with the uh, uh, currency. What I would like with currency is it would be impossible to steal it. And uh, let's see, so so limited supply is just inherently there with an element. Right? If I have like gold, just automatically limited, but it's often kind of hard to identify, you know, is this actually gold or is this some alloy or something or other, and then they wrap it in something dense, so it's a little different, that's the thing to say. And then all this stuff is stealable, right? So there's a big problem if you've got, like, a lot of cash in your pocket, so you can steal a lot of cash in the bank, and there's no attribution or anything on that, which is bad. So if, if you have what, what most people have in their pockets nowadays, is you get, uh, let me pull up the, yeah, uh, so I've got my Sam's Club card, and it's also a MasterCard, supposedly. So let's see. So, so I, I have this piece of plastic in my wallet, right? This is huge progress, right? Because suddenly people can, I mean, you can steal it, certainly, but then I can call the number of the back. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so you have to write down what the numbers are in the back. But, like, you know, I could call Sam's Club and say, like, card stolen, and they'll just make it not work. Good. If I know that things have been stolen. So if you want to steal a credit card, people have to not know you've stolen the credit card. Which makes, you know, the criminal's job a lot harder. Of course, the problem is, the uh, to steal a credit card, you just need this number, which is printed in large letters on the actual region of Rays. Uh, so so if, it's, if it's a secret number, but it's printed in big letters on the front of the card, and you have to take the card out all the time, I mean, some do the telephoto lens outside of a, you know, farmer's market. I guess they're not using credit cards in farmer's market. But uh, right, they, any, anywhere that, you know, uh, credit card transactions are happening, they're, uh, uh, you're kind of out of luck, right? I mean, you know the name of the card number. You're kind of, and, and, and it's actually, it's interesting, because apparently one of the main deterrents to credit card theft anymore is that credit card numbers are pretty close to value. There's just so many of them, right? It's just like maybe a dollar for a credit card. Because there's just yeah, there's so many. Because like point of sale, like when you swipe the card, it's actually getting sent off to uh, from But so, so it's pretty soon as there's a we have a number on the front of the card, we have magnetic strip, which is exactly the same data, right? It's just as like here's the number, great, right? Uh, and uh, unfortunately, that's not really. Are you potentially trying to cover up? Um, yeah. So that's I don't know why. It's a high order. Oh. Yeah. oh, shoot. Okay, so I should have been going. Yeah, that's that, 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 probably yeah, so. <laughs> My Sam's Club card, no. Yeah. I, I don't know if a Sam's Club card is actually useful anymore. Anyway. I, don't, I don't think it's taken into the really cash book, but maybe I'm in. So, uh, please don't do uh, that. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so, so the, the theft is a big deal, and, and the deal is credit cards make some progress on theft, right? Kind of retroactively cancel the existence of the debt. Just be honest with cash or like gold, like, uh, ha, I have that gold, like, you know, self destructed or something, which ceases to be of its surprise to destroy elements. Like, I can melt it down. It doesn't help. It's just molten gold, right? It's still gold. Uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't actually change the value of the really at all. Yeah. <laughs>
the, the explosive charges that hit the cyclical will spread it all around and hopefully the aircraft has to collect. Yeah, so so and is it so so theft is a big problem, right? And it's uh, uh yeah. So so credit cards, uh, is there a limited supply of credit cards? Well no, because credit cards are reference to these dollars. The reference to the electronic dollars, right? What a credit card is really representing is it's saying, yeah, the number in your account over here needs to go down, right? My credit card uh, uh, balance needs to go down, and then the, uh, the amount of money in the, the merchant's uh, credit card uh, account is low. Right? Very simple. Uh, PayPal is kind of the peer-to-peer -peer version of the same thing. Right? But PayPal has a big advantage. How often is the transaction for PayPal? Uh, yeah, you, so you, you go to eBay to buy something, and you say pay for this PayPal. You, it, you log into your PayPal account, essentially, and you say, yes, I would like to pay this amount to this person. Right? Uh, and then that, that's the system as you logging in on a web browser is the authentication. That's actually a great move forward. Because right? unless, unless an attacker can steal your PayPal credentials, which again, you can just call in and say, like, I think my credentials are compromised. Uh, then you're actually in good shape, right? But, uh, but it's, it's uh, so, 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 right, uh, there isn't like a, a, a paper number, uh, so, so, so I should be just covering up all the, all the numbers here. So th th there's another thing, again, this is pretty common in uh, in Europe. So there's a smart card uh, that's actually inside the uh, uh, in, in, inside the payment device. So you, at, right, at SAMS, you can stick this in, and it will actually do a cryptographic transaction with the, there's a little smart chip inside there. That, uh, that's actually cryptographically signing a transaction and saying, yes, you know, I authorized that. And eventually, at some point, it'd be nice if, and apparently Europe, being part of, Eastern Europe is part of Europe, right? So they have a huge problem with this. And they just switched to just having the smart cards. It's like, and, and, and I feel like this is actually, like, like uh, makes it much harder to steal a credit card if you have to steal the secret number inside the smart chip, right? And the smart chips are designed to not just, like, hand out the number, like, What's your number? Oh, okay, it's 17. Right? I mean, this is the, you can actually run a protocol on this thing, so like, it's good. So, so essentially, there's a secret key embedded in this thing. Maybe this is now the public key, so you don't care what the I mean, people can know what the correct number is, and still not uh, not be able to steal money out of your account. So, so another so so theft, counterfeiting, etc. Uh, the other big one is tracking. Who wants tracking? Who wants to be able to track your purchase? Yeah, right. Advertising agencies, and in particular, if you sell stuff to people, you want to know who was buying it, right? And so, so this is one big. This is one reason why stores actually prefer credit cards is that uh, they get your name and address, and it's enough to basically advertise to you. So, can you come back to the store, right, to say here, and we'll give you discounts if you come back? So, some of it's uh, credit cards actually have this ability to have tracking. Uh, see, it, uh, cash is totally missing this, though, right? If I just hand somebody 20, that's why they want your phone number. They want some unique identifier so that they know uh, uh, who's buying this stuff from them. So, yeah, so, so, so tra tracking is a little bit weird. Uh, if, if you're a criminal, which of these do you want? Well, you sure don't want counterfeiting to be possible. You sure don't want it to be possible. Well, you want to be able to steal from people, but not vice versa. I guess you, it needs to be a valuable thing so you can do some movements. But you really don't want tracking at all, right? So, so if uh, I, I, hopefully no one has any experience with this, uh, if you're buying a suitcase full of cocaine, credit card, <laughs> they don't take American Express. Right? Uh, it's got to be cash. It's got to be cash because there can't be a digital record of this transaction. Right? Like, not with a name and address, right? That would be insane. Right? So, so you, uh, so, so it has to be cash. Has to be captured so that so it's not traceable. So the deal with cryptocurrencies, they're going for all of the above, except they want no tracking. Right? So we need some limit on the supply. We need to make sure no one can counterfeit stuff. We need to make sure, I and mean, somehow it's very right, nice if we made it so that it's not possible to steal stuff. So what do you do? I mean, how, how do you do this? So uh, what I need is I need a digital wallet. What's in the digital wallet? Is the real question. The money. Yeah. So, so, well, so, so, so the question is, what? Uh, so, so here I have me. So this is the this is the two person economy. I have me, and in my account I have a certain amount, and in you and your in your account you have a certain amount. And what all I want to do in a, a sales transaction is me giving some of my money to you. So the question is, how do I d identify these things? Well, you could use an account number. I am account number zero. You are account number one. There's a big problem with this. Is it a guess account number? Right? 
Uh, and, and in fact, if, if everybody knows the account numbers, then suddenly you could just say, oh yeah, you gave a bunch of money to me, remember? I mean, how, how, uh, so how, how, do we, how do I prove that I did not do a bunch of money to you? I don't want to have that be a thing. <laughs> I, I want you to have to prove that I gave my money to you. Right? And in fact, the provenance of this thing has to be from you authorized this transaction using your what, what, what do we use? Signatures. What do we need? Yeah, some sort of secret key. Because I'm gonna have a secret key and I'm not gonna tell anybody, you're gonna have a secret key, you're gonna have to tell anybody. So here's a question. Whose key needs to sign this transaction? Both both of them? Yours. Clearly mine, because you're taking money out of my account. But I mean they will actually be able to mm, no, no. Actually be able to like, No no no, actually I don't want that. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So the, the, there's a great debate. Who signs these transactions? I mean, do, do you need both of these keys to? Be, and it's easy enough to actually just have duplicate signatures, right? Like signature of the sender, signature of the receiver, and, and that would be a legit thing. So, for example, for Bitcoin, they left it. Right? Uh, some anybody can send you money. Is that a feature or? It's. I think it's part kind of how of weird. I think how the um, the network has to be set up to be put it centralized. Maybe. So like. I check in and get my money and my thing. So, so if, uh, if, if your key does not have to actually sign the transaction, it's just the account number. That is all that they need in order to send, send some money. And this is public. So for example, I can post on my website saying, you want to send me money, send it to this, uh, this address. And, uh, and anybody can do that, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter, because it doesn't have to be signed by me. And if I want to send money, then I have to you know, connect to the secret stuff in my wallet and then you know, arrange some transactions. So it's one-sided if only the sender has to sign it. So th th this is what they picked, right? So they picked arbitrary choice here. Only the sender uh, uh, signs, signs the transaction. And then here, here, here's the cool part, right? So, so what makes this valuable is that you want to send it on to somewhere else, right? So you're, you're going to take, I don't know, that money and maybe some of some of your own, and you're going to take that stuff and you're going to send it on to him, so he's account number seven or something. And uh, that's that's their first their first transaction. What is he worried about? That yeah, is that money really in your account, right? Because it, so, so this would be a huge bug if, for example, I mean, I could sign a transaction saying, like, I just gave a million dollars to my buddy. I don't have a million dollars. Where did the million dollars come from? That's the, that's the crucial thing. So in, uh, so in, in, in Bitcoin, uh, uh, these are called addresses. I pick sort of an account balance. A person can have as many of them as they want. In fact, usually it's treated as somewhat ephemeral. And then uh, uh, basically the, the, there has to be a provenance for where, where, where the funding came from. Right? If, if there's money in an, in an address, you have to say where, I mean, that has to be where that came from. In fact, basically the signature for where it came from is embedded in this transaction right, that you are signing. So what you're signing is you're saying, I have this amount from this guy, right? And you basically have included the signature from the previous one. Uh, and uh, and then it, and then hopefully somewhere they can look up and say yeah that, that came from somewhere else. So uh, again, lots of possible bugs here. So for example, somebody could just say, I sent money from my own account, which has money because hey, there's money in my account. The self transaction. I just transferred a million dollars to me. Where did it come from? Me. And I have a million dollars. Look, where did it come from? Me. Right. Uh, so so, so uh, disallowed transaction. I am sending this. This is just money that arrived from nowhere. Okay. That's the digital counterfeit. You can have as many nodes as you want along this chain, right? But this, uh, so, so there has to be some time order to this thing. How do you enforce a time order? How do you so? so here's you. How, how do you know these transactions actually happened? Right? And, and these transactions and other transactions. At some point, there has to be some initial transaction. The big bang of money. <laughs> Right. So, so how do you create money in Bitcoin? You mine it. It's called mining. So the, the deal with mining is that uh, I'm going to do some work for the system. The work for the system is going to allow me to create a block of Bitcoins. So I, I just get a payoff. And then it, it's, it's actually an enormous amount. It's 25 Bitcoins right now, which is on the order of $6,000. So, uh, so, so, so it has to be a sort of a fairly respectable amount of work. The current amount of work it takes to, to mine a block of bitcoins is about two minutes. 
corn ashes. That's a big well, yeah, so, so, so I mean, this, this is way more work than breaking like BS or searching for security space. Every 10 minutes, the Bitcoin network at the moment is breaking this brute forcing So I, I should be able to show you this happening. If I am actually logged on the network properly, in, in my dot Bitcoin directory, I hope this is actually. My, my client is still up. Okay, it's just not, that's it. So that's it's tough to see what that's happening here. That, that, that's a hash right there. That is a SHA-256 hash. And uh, I'm looking at there. And the debug here. Right so I got an update. Of, so this is the new best hash, right? This is the. Uh, so this is the 349,000 uh, uh, transactions, right? or the blocks of transactions. Or this is this hash, right? So, so that the hash, these are all leading zeros of the hash. How do you get a bunch of leading zeros in a hash bit? Right? If you know how to get a bunch of leading zeros on a hash code, you can win all the bitcoins. <laughs> right? Uh, so, 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 so th there is no better known algorithm than brute force at the moment. So we brute force. So, so, uh, uh, so, so the, the way people mine bitcoin is they take every transaction that's happened for the last ten or so minutes. They, the, 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 you're allowed to put a nonce at the end, and you're allowed to put a transaction to this end that says my account suddenly has twenty five bitcoins. You can collect fees from all the all the uh, uh, transactions. But basically, all, all I've done is uh, so, so I, I I look through that thing and I have to hash that transaction uh, and get a whole lot of leading zeros. It started off being like 30 leading zeros. It was like we tried a billion hashes and we finally found the one with 30, 30 leading zeros. That 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 indicates that uh, these transactions really happen. So if somebody wants to fabricate this, right? Somebody says like, oh, I have the alternate history. They need to do a billion, you know, work. This is now a billion square. In those, uh, uh, the, the sort of mining, so, so Bitcoin mining is just taking all the transactions that have happened and uh, basically uh, you you validated them, right? So you you verify that the signatures all match, that the uh, the balances are are non zero, that everything works there, and your reward for doing that is getting six thousand dollars every ten minutes. Uh, and, and believe it or not, there's a lot of competition for that. It's got to be pretty dang enormous. And, and so, so, so there was a while where basically you could just like plug in your quad core machine and have a computing hashes, and you could make a respectable number of bitcoins, which nobody knew what those were worth, uh, in, in, in a respectable period of time. That that ended when they figured out how to compute hashes on GPUs. They go to AMD GPUs had great hashing algorithms, and they basically like just put all the CPU miners out of business. And uh, then they put custom hardware, right? Uh, so, so right, a little USB dongle plugs in, and I think it's PCI Express cards or something, but basically are just like salt silicon that's just a dedicated array of SHA-256 computers, right, that are basically computing at some insane rate. Put all the GPU miners out of business, and then again, each generation of this. So, so as the mining rates are so incredible nowadays, it's pretty much uneconomical to mine. Right? 400,000. Oh, no, 400 million giga hashes per second. 400 million giga hashes. So yes. millions of billions of hashes. Or, or like, yeah. Uh, so in, in, in 10 minutes, they can they can brute force a 64 bit key space, which is uh, pretty, that's, that's pretty legit. Uh, let's see. Sure. Actually, it's a little bit better um, find control than that. They actually just have a number that has to be less. It ends up being zero. So 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 the difficulty gets adjusted to make it so that about every ten minutes somebody solves a block. Right. And and actually if you if the uh, mining rate kicks up, then maybe they solve solve a bunch of blocks in less than ten minutes. And then they readjust the difficulty so it's back every ten minutes. So yeah, so 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 so, so the trick is 
there isn't a machine sitting in somebody's basement that's doing all the transactions. Why not? Why not just I mean pick a machine and say like look I mean so 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 this 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 whole thing was proposed during the financial crisis. This so there, there's a paper on the paper for John Mo looking for his black. So I mean Satoshi Nakamoto. Right. Uh, uh, as far as I know, this is probably not from a Japanese person. I mean, that would be clever. Yeah, totally wrong uh, uh, source country. Uh, right. So it's uh, so there, nobody knows who that is, which is you know it seems about right for if you're going to make a cryptographic currency, you're really concerned about privacy, etc. So it's just like you know pseudonym, zombie. I would say. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't I, I had no idea about uh, any of this stuff at the time. So, uh, right. So, so it's, uh, uh, yeah. So it's it's just been proposed by somebody. Why not have this guy's basement computer be the local global register for this thing? Started Yeah. Then then the network goes down. Yeah. I mean, but Visa does this, right? The notion of Visa means a computer network run by. You know, Group of banks, is an organization, right? And they didn't do that, right? But they're backed by currency, something else. That yeah, it's not their currency, it's not right. dollars, it's mm -hmm. dollars. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's still alternatives. Yeah. Other so, so, so why not just pick an organization and say, look, we're going to pick the uh, I don't know who. Uh, it's going to be the Internet uh, Sign Numbers Association is going to run the currency backlog. They are going to have the definitive register. We're not going to have to do this hashing business or lining or none of that stuff. Yeah. Well, or what if they don't even break in? What if it's just like the Internet Assigned Number Association realizes, like, oh, hey, uh, how much is that Bitcoin network worth that we're, that we're running? And it turns out at the moment it's a couple billion dollars. And they're like, a billion dollars on that computer that I have root on? Yeah. Screw y'all. <laughs> right. So I mean, the, the temptation inevitably is that somebody is going to steal it if they have access to it. If, if somebody controls the register, right, like where stuff happens, then it's really tempting to just say like, yeah, those are mine now, right? So, so for example, if you look at uh, so, so that there's some, some of these. Uh, so here's an address, and and you can just look up. Uh, I mean, there's there's a QR code. You want to send money to that address? You scan that QR code and then just. Right, and the current balance is uh, nine thousand. And a balance of nine thousand corresponds to two point two million dollars. Do I have the link wrong? Have they received that money? Uh, I think uh, yeah, my, my, my link goes to the uh, the old one, two point two million dollars, and the actual address. So here, here's another one that I found that was even older. So this one has a balance of 19 million dollars, and, and then it's got these like so. So this is interesting, right? So there's a note on this contribution of two cents that says like, uh, "I've been housebound for 21 years. Somebody help me enjoy my life before it's too late." This is a contribution into a 20 million dollar Bitcoin account. There, there, there's a number of these, right? Like people uh, let's see. Uh, see, I have a problem with health. And my wife has a problem with health. Yeah, send me a thousand bitcoins. Others, please. Uh, Bitcoin is just commercial spam, right? So, uh, uh, so uh, people are contributing money, hoping to get the attention of whoever has control of this twenty million dollar account, right? Uh, I mean, it's uh, yeah, it's strange. So, like, I, I I can donate money apparently for uh, into that. Uh, so, 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 so here's the weird part, right? This, this account was worth that current exchange was under 20 million That's the public key. There's some corresponding private key. If that corresponding private key is stored on like some trusted server, not trusted anymore, 20 million boxes uh, takes a lot of trust, right? This is like the, the, the exchange is going down to Bitcoin and running with the money. Currency. This is there's actually been some speculation several times about like so, so, so you know there'll, there'll be some organization like we'll have you know half a billion dollars of people's money and and uh, oftentimes it'll be where it's not the the people don't have their own private their private keys are stored on a website somewhere and then all the accounts have been empty and you're like how'd that happen my my private key was stored securely on your website and they're like oh. 
we was hacked. So the question is, were they hacked, or did the you know the CEO or the sysadmin or somebody just decide to take them on the run? And uh, so, so there's a lot of these things that sort of collapse in a cloud of uh, accusations, etc. And, and I don't know, it's, it's so, so, so the deals. Uh, if you do, if you have a substantial amount of money in bitcoins, you really ought to have your own private key stored on a computer that you own and trust and know uh, that a terribly, terribly important. If you don't, somebody can actually go and just transfer money out of this. Here's the other interesting part about that. No one knows who owns this money. Right? That is the address which has a balance of 80,000 bitcoins. Right? Well, if you ever spent money, right? Well, if you spent it, you'd think you could you could actually work it out. Here's the problem, right? If you if I scroll back, so somewhere here in the transaction history. So th this particular account is kind of interesting because it it was formed by assembling a bunch of like really early Bitcoin uh, like my, so uh, it, it, at the beginning of the network, the uh, uh, mining had a reward of like uh, 50 Bitcoins per block, and there were a huge number of blocks that were mined like at the start of the network. There weren't any transactions, just like. Clearly, somebody's basement computer was running the entire network, right? It's just like, yeah, here we are, and just sort of ash and ashes and runs for a couple of months like that. It's uh, as, as far as they can tell, that's this account. So Satoshi Nokomoto, right, would be Nokomoto, would be the obvious uh, owner of this account, and basically, right, he, he just kind of accumulated all of the the little like Bitcoin, you know, mining streams in this one big account. And presumably they have the private key somewhere. Maybe they don't. Maybe it's like a public service that says just burn the private key, <laughs> so that this limits the supply of bitcoins or something. I think that would be a twenty million dollar donation. So kind of more than I feel like do personally, but uh, yeah. So, so in other words, I mean, it, it, it's kind of amazing. And, and this account has just sat there since two thousand eleven, right? When they sort of accumulate all these accounts. And I mean, maybe it's somebody's retirement account. Maybe it's somebody like has no idea that they own that. <laughs> So yeah, so, so, so I mean, this is—it's kind of an amazing situation, right? We, you can, you can see where this money came from. Where this money came from was either mining or the sort of transactions after the result of mining. And some, some of these. So, so the one that I was just at, I guess, was kind of interesting. Yeah, you know, the, so the reason I didn't put this one in lecture notes, I didn't try to put this one in lecture notes, is because this totally took so, so, so where did this uh, uh, so this two million dollar account came from a whole bunch of like twenty five bitcoin like contributions and twenty five bitcoins is the reward for mining except these twenty five bitcoin contributions came from other bigger accounts right so so basically some really huge account got split up into a bunch of little tiny like twenty five bitcoin transactions and then those got reglomerated into uh, other like uh, another big transaction what does that sound like? Money laundering. Sounds like money laundering to me. I mean, I'm just uh, there's no guarantee there, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and like, so, so, so the crazy thing is, like, you can, I mean, you can split bitcoins as much as you want, right? So, and if you look at this, there's a whole lot of 25 bitcoin transactions. This is a reasonable size, right? That's the mining reward that would be on the amount you would kind of expect. But like, you can just kind of keep clicking, and there's this sort of network of transactions of just money going. In fact, there's services whose whole job is like, you just give us a bunch of bitcoins. And we just, you know, make it hard to figure. Right? We mix them with other people's money that people have to find a lot of money, and then yeah, and it, uh, and then you know, money comes out. So, so as the organization is done a good doing this, yeah, I can trust those organizations. I mean, I could totally see like, you know, total scammers just like, oh yeah, we got part of Bitcoin laundering service. No one will ever find your money after we're done with it. Bitcoin doesn't sell itself. and actually work. Yeah, just double double. Oh. You send me 20 Bitcoin, I'll give you 40 back. Really, I will. And maybe they do for a while because it's like a pyramid scam. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And then they, they, but they've been siphoning up Bitcoins, and when they can't get enough suckers in, then they just like, oh, we were hacked. <laughs> yeah. That happened by. Oh, Ethan. Well, the guy who played Ethan's bank. Oh yeah. Micromanaging all the accounts of all these big deals, especially when they say, all right, I quit. I'm going to retire. <laughs> it's like, you can't do this. Like, I can't. It's a game. It's like thousands of dollars of digital stuff. Yeah, so, so, so here's the weird part about this, right? Is that there's just a bunch of you that are 
And there's just a, and you know, there's like almost an absurd number of transactions happening here. But what's kind of surprising is to really join the network. So, so it, again, it's designed as peer to peer. The default seems to be you download all the transactions. And I don't know why this would seem like a good idea, but uh, but when there weren't that many, it made sense. And nowadays, the, the list of transactions. So uh, it's 36 gigs so far. I guess it's only 30. Uh, so the 36 gigabytes of total transactions. Those transactions are like a kilobyte. So you're talking about you know 36 million transactions. It's actually a fairly small number. But uh, you know, the, and, and and the deal is they're in a chain. Right? That chip zone is the, the the first one is basically hashed to get the, the starting hash of the next one. And the starting hash and and the uh, right the uh, the nonces have been such that like the end of that chain is is really really well established as having really happened. Right? So much computational effort has gone into making these extremely improbable hashes. Uh, so so as if uh, if yesterday somebody filled some money into this account, well, there's been a lot of ten minute periods that basically said yeah that transaction really happened. And it's really hard to you know, come to some way to say no, that transaction didn't happen. Right. Uh, but uh, so if uh, if you want to take payments in Bitcoin, uh, it's it's actually a little bit surprising this being the peer-to-peer -peer thing. You you basically just or you you prepare a transaction or you sign it. Uh, or you, right, if somebody uh, uh, sends you money, they have to sign it and then they have to kind of get it into the network. They, actually, I guess it's probably you want to send it into the network. To make sure that it's really there. You, you know, it's your, the provenance of your account balance is really important for you to publicize, so you will send it out to the peer, -peer. And then you want to make sure it actually gets hashed. Because if it just if those packets get dropped, then this transaction didn't really happen. And then you have to say, hey, you need to send me money again because that didn't actually make it or didn't verify it. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, eventually, it's uh, so so. Uh, th there's a lot of decimal places that are possible in the uh, so, so. If we go back, uh, let's see. So so you can you can actually divvy up this thing into like eight decimal places. So so for example, this uh, the nine million account balance actually is like goes all the way down to there, right? And it's to the to the eighth decimal place. Now now the first thing is like uh, you really can't you can't afford to record. Tiny fractions of penny. It's just not worth worrying about. It's not worth miners bothering to include in the, in the transaction. So miners actually explicitly allowed to include anything they want or in, in the transaction there. So typically you had a you had a fee of like a few cents okay, uh, that that, uh, that basically will incentivize the miners to include your block in the chain. So, so you, you put in a fixed fee of a few a few pennies, and then it's going to get included in the uh, in, in the blockchain, and everybody's you know. Uh, it, it turns out the pay the payoff for, from these things is actually fairly okay for miners. In fact, it's starting to get to the point where uh, uh, the fees for the fees tacked on are. are let's see, so this is the total fees per block, uh, and and like the, there's this big bump in Bitcoin. So like there, at some point the transaction be like 300 Bitcoin. Oh, what, was that not right? No, 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 no. I think that, <laughs> that somebody accidentally. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's just like somebody who really wants to make dang sure this transaction is like stealing all the money from there, gets in as fast as possible. So like, I'll give you a Bitcoin. Fine. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, uh, splitting things up. And it, it's kind of stabilized at like the 10, 12 range. And again, you get 25 Bitcoin just for solving the block. Uh, we want a limited supply. Mining rate is fixed, right? Every 10 minutes, you're going to be solving the block. If every 10 minutes stretching out into the future, what is the limit on the supply? Every 10 minutes, there's 25 more Bitcoin. It's still scarce enough. You can't. Yeah, you, 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 so, so there's, there's some time rate that Bitcoin's getting inj injected into the system. But like the cumulative number of Bitcoins generated forever is actually not constant anymore. Yeah. Right, it just keeps getting more and more and more. And more. But they didn't like that. So Satoshi designed in. So, so part of this is uh, miners are supposed to. Uh, every uh, four years, they, they cut in half the number of bitcoins that are uh, allowed at the bottom of the block. And there's actually some debate as to whether the miners are going to really follow that protocol. As really, it's a peer-to-peer it's a -peer kind of consensus-driven thing, so who, who knows what, uh, whether that's really going to happen. 
But uh, but yeah, so, so uh, it, it, it switched from 50 Bitcoin reward down to 25 Bitcoin reward as of like two years ago or something. It's now going down to 12 and a half. But, and, and, but actually, at that point, the transaction fees are hopefully going to be basically equivalent. So at this point, the network is kind of self-sustaining. Right. Enough people are willing to pay Bitcoin. Right. And the, no, it's uh, like any time I do a transaction, so you're like, fine, like, yeah. Yeah. Right. Where is the fee listed here? I've, I've seen this actually in the. So, so the, 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 there'll be basically a transaction going to the miner. And I uh, sent you a note with that somewhere. No, 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 it's like an actual one. It's a real transaction. Okay. Be it might be, uh, is it implicit? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so, so the, the, there's the fee. That was a 17 cent fee, right? Because it's a, uh, uh, let's see, a 250 Bitcoin transaction and are worth, you know, $60,000, putting 17 cents in there to make sure it actually gets the code code register. That makes sense, right? It's so it's uh, yeah, uh, I mean it's, it's surprising. Uh, so so you know, this, uh, the, the, so so the fees are part of this, right? I I do a transaction. No one is going to care that I did that transaction. No one's even going to write down that transaction unless I include another transaction because a tiny fraction of this ends up in your name here. If 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 they mine, yeah. right? But, but, but like I can mine and have no transactions listed and still get twenty five. So it, it, it's worthwhile to include this quarter kill by thing if I get some small amount out. Yeah, I mean, that's it, weird, right? This is, again, the situation where, like, if there's an organization dedicated to doing it, then they just have to service transactions, right, or right, whatever. But this is a no-rule situation. Like, somebody could modify their miner. It's like, I have to strip down ultra mine. It's just like, screw the transactions and just mining. I'm just finding out what they think. They think yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so the, yeah, it, and it kind of screws up the decimal places that like you know you start with 250 and you end up with 249.9994, but that's uh, that's the way it works, right? So uh, all, all the stuff has to end up in, in there somewhere. Questions about the transaction process? I'm curious about the how you the that's the only hash that you can yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, and if, if somebody figures out how to like totally break shot to six, where they're just like, I can look at the transactions, I can figure out the nonce and give me a block of all zero hash of all zeros, well, I win all the bitcoins until you know, yeah. <laughs> they switch hashes. And, and, and if it turns out that somebody's just like, yeah, uh, I instantly in a quarter second just got like. So I'll block, I'll block, I'll block, they're really tested. Screw you! Still solving all the problems. They would gain a huge chunk of it. Actually, I don't know what that would happen. It, it, would, it would be really bad, right? So, uh, say somebody, like some amazing discovery in crypto, this would be like a movie plot uh, type. I can just look at this public key. I can figure out the private key. And I just get all the bitcoins. What's the value of Bitcoin at this point? Nothing. <laughs> Even if I'm the only one in the world that can do that, right? It's like, come on, guys, why do you not want bitcoins that I can just steal back? <laughs> I'll give you as many as you want. I can take it back again. It doesn't matter. You think you that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's already happening. Maybe somebody's always yeah. like chaff. <laughs> and as so, 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 <laughs> bitcoin thefts have totally been a thing. So, so uh, how how can you steal bitcoins? I mean, so so crypto progress would be one thing. Nobody knows how to do that, right? You'd have to break the ultra curve signature stuff. Uh, if you have the private key, then you can sign a transaction saying, "All oh, your money, not there anymore." Uh, so that's that's bad. So if if somebody has a root off a box that stores the private keys, you're in trouble. How do you prevent? The, I'm sure people don't have root off the box. I'm thinking crypto. They encrypt the keys so that they could have root on the box, unless they're, they have root on the box. At the moment you decrypt the key to do a transaction, you're still okay. Uh, let's see, uh, the other theft of Bitcoin. Somebody says, What is the password? You're going to make a transaction, or you're never going to see your cat again. 
Now, I didn't even like that cat. <laughs> How about your dog? Not fluffy. <laughs> uh, all right. So, so, so yeah. So, so you know, you're any com the usual combination of uh, platforms. So, so, so let's say you have just like uh, you know they uh, they release your dog unharmed because you transferred your seventy thousand coins off the account. What do you do? What's your recourse? You can see that's the address. Take it to the police. Say, please get that my dog and stole all my bitcoin. Arrest them immediately. This is literally all they have to go on. What, what, what else? What else you got to go on? What they spend money. If, if they spend money, you can trace the transactions. The transactions are like they're going all over the place. Some of the money is used to buy drugs. Probably, I don't even know. Is it all getting bought in one place? I don't know. It's, yeah. And, and, and chances are they're going to take it straight to a Bitcoin launderer so, and then get it mixed with lots of other money. That, you know. that, that private key is to a wallet, not a person. Right? So a person can have many wallets. Like, and as, as many addresses as you want. Yeah, uh, essentially the key Yeah. So you just, yeah. It's, it's 2 to the 2 to the 6. Right? Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is if later mm -hmm. you might buy bread and close the Oh, yeah. And you can just like... Yeah. But, but here's the problem, right? Uh, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what if they wait 30 years to do that? But they're just like, I'm just going to sit there and you know, let, this, uh, let this guy get it. Uh, eventually, he's going to stop looking. And, and during that whole time, right, there can just be this wall of transactions. Yeah. Another wall of transactions. Yeah. 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 I mean, if, if, and if, yes, local supermarkets put Bitcoin, it would be a lot easier. <laughs> but they don't, so that's the problem. So nobody, it, nobody like, <laughs> other than the internet thinks. Here, and here's the other ironic thing about this. I really want to give a demo in this class of, like, I mean, I set up a wallet and I downloaded the 36 gigs of transactions uh, and everything. And uh, here, here's the deal. So, I mean, I have a wallet. So here's my little wallet. It's awesome. It has an ID, which is public, uh, and it has an address. And these are all the stuff that's public. I can happily show you any of this stuff. Because uh, basically, this is how you put money into this thing. OK, I was like, oh, let me put money into this thing. This should be easy. I have money. I can't get money into Bitcoin, which is kind of ironic, right? So if, if you look at the, so, so lots of places say, yes, just go here, and you can put money into Bitcoin. So, so. Right, so, so, for example, Coin Mama, right, is like, uh, get your money into Bitcoin. This is fine. Except I'm unverified. So, to, to verify your account, please submit a high quality image of your yeah, passport, yeah, national ID card, or driver's know. license. I'm like, oh, well, God, no. what? Why would I do this, right? That this is like, uh, yeah, like I mean, because you want yeah. Other copies of Orion, I mean, this just sounds like a bad idea, right? Why are Why are they demanding this? They, oh, I, this I don't think these people are crooks. This is the really good part. So, uh, I know that there's some like actual legal legislation that requires that banking standards of banks are banks have to know your phone. Right, and so the, 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 there's more ironic thing here, but like I mean, in the modern economy, like if it makes like there may be some law that says like you must something something something, but like if there's a bunch of money to be made by just like taking random credit card transactions, turning them Bitcoin, people are just going to do it. Right, so it, it turns out you can't make money doing this. Why not? So you're like stand up the PHP script. It takes a credit card number. That's a valid credit card number. The address matches the CCP. CV2 matches. I say yes. Here's your bitcoins. Good transaction. No, it wasn't. That was a stolen credit card number. It was uploaded by a carter. He now has Bitcoin. Right? The, uh, the actual legit legal owner of that card is going to say, that was an invalid transaction. I never authorized buying Bitcoin. What do you do? Can't handle it. You can't, can't, you can't get the Bitcoins back. You're out of luck. Right? You've just gone from a refundable, verified, validated, traceable transaction to credit card that are used legitimately by lots of people all the time to a totally untraceable, you know, uh, transaction system that, like, is kind of shady and has no refunds whatsoever. You have just provided, the, you know, the conduit to get money into the illegal system, right? So, so people don't do it. This is why, like, Coin Mama says, like, look, i got to know who you are. i got to know you are actually a legit person or before, before I can actually give you Bitcoins, right? 
And it's even for like you know forty dollars worth of bitcoins. If uh, if my uh, and I uh, there, there's a site that will do if you have a verified PayPal account, which I didn't because I uh, didn't want PayPal knowing what my bank account is, so I finally said, okay, my bank account does not have much money. I can, uh, so I'm, I'm, but the verification process is going to take several days too, so I'm not able to take any transaction. And it's kind of frustrating because there's sites where you can like win bitcoins, like some fractional penny or something. But uh, you have to win enough that it's worth actually tipping the the miners to get the transaction recorded for it to actually even work. <laughs> so like the you know the, the tiny fraction of bitcoin, like they're doing, like we'll give you a fraction of a cent for looking at our banner ad. It's fine here. But uh, the problem is then you don't, and there's not enough money there to, uh, to actually fund the transaction that ends up. Less expensive transactions would definitely probably make uh, that part easier, but uh, and for, for microtransactions, I don't know how to do that. So, uh, yeah, you know, the, here, here's another problem with Bitcoin. And, and this is a problem with any alternative currency transaction system, right? Like, pretty much every legit organization, like if you sell cars, like, you have some way of getting payment for those cars. Right? This is a pretty well understood thing, right? You take checks that you verify, you take fat walls of cash, great. You have, if you've got a high enough limited credit card, you do that. We'll bill you later. We'll set up a loan, right? Lots of options. Uh, if, if, if you're a grocery store, right? Lots of options. Uh, who really desperately needs Bitcoin? I mean, the, 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 one, the one killer app for Bitcoin was uh, illegal drugs over the internet. Because illegal drugs, the marketplace is really well established, but it's a cash economy. Because you can't take credit cards because you will get busted. Uh, and uh, over the internet is great, right? We know how to sell things legitimately over the internet because credit cards are perfect. That. But again, if you can't do that. So, so the Silk Road is a total thing. We call the Fed and busted the Silk Road. Uh, most recent one. Is, is there a 2.0? So, so uh, the way that a lot of exchanges work is that you give money in Bitcoin to them and they hold it in their wallet and they say, okay, we're going to manage your money for you. And they just chuck the money. That's, they just yeah. Chuck it. yeah, that's a common problem. Yeah. 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 We've, we've managed it. Yeah. So, so this is, I mean, there's this interesting moral question. Right? I, mean, I, I, I have no idea who the she is, or what uh, you know, what his thinking was. But I mean, so, so this came out in uh, late 2008. What was happening in late 2008? The economy was imploding. Right? I mean, people were so, so the you know uh, the leverage derivatives, right? All of these bizarre financial instruments. People had no confidence in the banks. The thinking was that maybe like you know, like people were like, gosh, are uh, are we going to be? Uh, back in the 1930s, when there's not enough money, or is it going to be worse than that? Right? I mean, does anybody know how much money in Britain has? So the idea was, I think, totally legit, morally, I mean, upright to say, like, we need a so something where we don't have to trust the banks, we don't have to trust the government to not print more dollars, we don't have to trust anybody. We can actually just do a payment system that is totally independent of all that, and we just use crypto, right? We replace mathematics for all of the sort of social trust that we, we once had. Now the problem is. Uh, the banks didn't collapse. I mean, a couple of them did, but they got merged with non-collapsing banks. Right? Uh, to, to the extent that, that so here's the other main thing: is that the, 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 the limit on the supply is actually quite negotiable with the dollar. Right? So, for example, Federal Reserve can say, you know what? People desperately want dollars all of a sudden. Right? As of 2007, people are like, no, I want houses. Houses are awesome. And people are like, why? I have a mortgage in this house. The value of the house is dropping. I can't get a mortgage in this house. Right? It's dropping. I can't, you know, I can't find renters. I lost my job, right? So, so, so uh, people are realizing that I shouldn't have land. I should have cash. Cash is awesome, right? So demand for cash increases, and uh, if your supply of cash is fixed, you have this huge problem that, like, the basically the value of the currency has to go up. So if, if you if you chart the value of the Bitcoin uh, relative to the dollar, it's actually been kind of weird. So it was like really near zero. Like right? Bitcoin, we have no idea what Bitcoin's for. Well, the first transaction for Bitcoin was a guy, like two, two users on the Bitcoin forum, right? Like, I will give you, I don't know, 10,000 Bitcoin for pizza. He's, uh, that's, that's, that's on your, uh, you know, that's uh, $100,000 a pizza now. Uh, like my current valuation, but uh, but that, that, they were like, sure, what the heck, right? 100,000 men and men. So the value is very, 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 very
it was called at the time the Great Bitcoin Bubble, where they're like thirty-two dollars per Bitcoin. That's an insane valuation, right? And then it just drops back down to like a few dollars per Bitcoin. And then like it's in the news, you can't like listen to the radio without hearing the Bitcoin. And it's a thousand dollars per Bitcoin. And and then it's kind of just been doing this sort of. Thing. And this is because this, so this isn't specifically demand for Bitcoin. Because the supply of Bitcoin has been pretty close to constant. Right? It's like, you know, the rate of supply. So, so the deal is supply versus demand. Uh, if, the, if, the, if the demand changes and the supply can't change, the value has got to adjust. And that's what's going to happen. So if you look at the price chart for gold or something, I keep thinking I should buy gold and the thing. Shouldn't so let's see. So if you look at like the one year, uh, there should be charts somewhere. Where are the charts? So you, you look at the charts for gold. Uh, I need to flash away. Awesome. Yeah. No, 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 thank you. So so uh, it, it turns out yeah, gold, gold was another one. Yeah. So uh, gold. It, it's just all over the place. So. So, so basically, I mean, it's it, it went way up over the, you know, uh, let's see, from 2000. I mean, it, as of about 2000, no one thought gold was an interesting thing. And then uh, financial crisis hits, and people are like, man, gold, it's actually a real thing. This peaks out at like 2009, we're like closing in on 1,000. It actually went to about double that. Uh, let's see, I don't know if this is. Maybe the x-axis. Okay. This happened in 1970. People were thinking like dollars. We don't want dollars. Inflation. Uh, we want to, we want to buy gold. Gold was legalized for people to own, so it actually reached this enormous uh, at the time price, and then it sort of collapsed for 20, 30 years. Uh, but basically, right, so supply and demand are going to vary. If your supply can't vary, for example, because there's only so much gold out there, or because the, your source code has said like there's there's this much stuff, then you're going to have lots of uh, uh, value changes. And uh, I, I think this is actually a pretty damning type of so again, dollar does not operate this way. So in 2008, there was this huge demand for dollars. Everyone wants dollars. What did anybody know what the Federal Reserve did? They made more dollars. They made on the order of like uh, I think it's two trillion dollars of just new dollars. But they sort of and and, and the joke at the time. So Ben Bernanke, the uh, the, the, the chairman. He, he, he was called Helicopter Ben because he, he, he was actually quoted uh, in one of the speeches saying, like, worst case, we can literally dump money out of helicopters. <laughs> I mean, like, if we just need, I mean, people want money. Here, take it. Yay, everybody has money, right? And you can't overdo it, right? But it's actually also not underdo it. And, and it, so it's kind of funny. I have the US dollar was on the gold standard for, I don't know, 100 and something years. And uh, th th there were some really bad deflationary periods. So, I mean, the value of the dollar really effectively uh, also went down. On. The value of the dollar decreasing is inflation, which is bad because uh, you know the uh, paycheck buys less and less. Which you know that we you know that deflation is actually much worse. Uh, so, so I, I have a loan, right? The loan for your house is a hundred thousand dollars. If uh, right, you earn you know hundred thousand dollars a year, you think yeah, it's totally fine. I can manage interest. If suddenly there's this big deflationary period and your your salary is only thirty thousand, but you can still live on that, everything's fine. The the, the nominally denominated loan amount is still a hundred thousand. In other words, if the uh, if, if the dollar value of your house right, is, uh, is is basically fixed, but the value of of a dollar is increasing, then it's really bad for borrowers. And it, it means that essentially you can't have uh, borrowing in the economy. You either have to like outlaw borrowing, gold standard, hard money. There are people that this actually for their own society. Uh, and it, it would probably work for totally grown up people that are like, uh, debt, nope, never going to do that. Right? I'm going to wait until I have enough money to well, buy the house. There's another problem with it, right? So yeah. if I have $10 and I know that tomorrow Bitcoin, I'm going to be able to buy $100 of stuff. Yeah. Just today, wait. Oh, I'm just going to wait, right? And never buy anything. And that's exactly not the economy. Yeah, deflation kind of has a bad habit of you know, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, you know. No one's buying anything, so we have to lay off people for wages. So oh no, so no, really, no one's buying anything now. Yeah. So, so, so I mean, so so they managed to avoid a deflationary spiral in the U.S., which has been the natural sort of outcome by just dumping dollars into the economy. And the worry is that like they'll overdo it. That like uh, maybe Janet Yellen, but it will you know Obama will say like we need to choose the economy or something, and that she'll be like yes sir. Or, 
push it right on that. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it, it, it's certainly easy to overdo it. There's plenty of countries that have inflation problems, but it's you know that they're pretty well understood. Less dollars should be a problem. It's not that hard. It's just political. So, so yeah. So, so uh, as a medium of exchange, I feel like the dollar, the current fiat dollar, I have you know, some some misgivings about the notion that the government can just randomly decide to make more dollars. It's always a little scary, but uh, I mean, th there it is. I, I do feel like you know, if you want to use Bitcoin, that's totally legit. But uh, I mean, yeah, Bitcoin yeah, yeah, there are. The, you can yeah get, getting cash in and cash out. Of, this is true for a lot of stuff. Right? Like if, if you want if you want gold, you can go and buy retail gold, but you better have cash in your hand. Or something. And, and yeah, I, I, I certainly know this like okay, uh, Harvard Middle School or something like. Oh yeah, you can totally buy an Arduino online. You can't buy an Arduino online, right? Like you just get your credit card. Nope. <laughs> you, you write a check in your bank account. Nope. <laughs> the thing is, they have like I have twenty dollars in my hand. That was the advantage of Reading Shack. They take cash money for electrons. Good for good for kids. So yeah, uh, I, I don't know. This is so. so there's uh, right. So Silk, Silk Road, totally a thing. Uh, I mean, the Feds do not like uh, selling drugs. <laughs> they have a problem with that apparently. And and it's uh, I mean it's it, I think it's, it, there's this crazy chart in, in the lecture notes you can look up. So, so this this was a an estimate of damage caused by various drugs. And you notice the big one. I mean the overall harm is alcohol. Heroin is still pretty bad. Crack is still pretty bad. But some of the stuff like uh, I don't know, uh, I, I don't know butane, ecstasy or LSD, butane. butane apparently is a thing. Yeah. I don't know. And, and, I mean, like you know, it, it's strange because if, if we were, if I feel like if we were being objective about this, right? Like uh, I don't know, some of the stuff that's illegal and like people go away for many of these things. Uh, apparently, the harm is doesn't actually seem to be terribly big, whereas some of the stuff that's totally legal, like alcohol, and we tried making alcohol illegal. That, that was worse than having that. Illegal, so I don't know. Uh, so so it, it, it may be really hard to maintain our current sort of legal, you know, division into like you know, these are illegal and these are. Look at the ones that are illegal and not illegal is actually kind of amazingly weird. That like, you know, totally legal, totally not illegal, illegal, illegal. Ill uh, I don't know. I think it's missing an H there, but yeah. Uh, okay. Co cocaine is totally legal if it's administered in the hospital. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Tobacco is pretty much totally legal. It's amphetamine. These must be the British spellings or something. Marijuana was illegal, but is now sort of kind of legal depending on where you live. THP. What a bunch of these are. So, so it's kind of it's 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 just all over the place. Like what's legal and what's not is like this historical outcome, rather than having any correlation with harm. Right. So, yeah. so, so, so surprising fact about technology: technology will often enable things you have no idea why they enable them. Right. I mean, why is it that Bitcoin just, just becomes like me? I mean, it's it's the killer app for selling drugs across the internet. Right? It is a totally reliable, untraceable payment system. Woohoo! Right? So, yeah, finally. And uh, and I don't think that's what Satoshi was after. I mean, he doesn't mention that in the paper. Maybe secretly, is like, now I can finally find a way to monetize my you know, computer skills with my ability of my total lack of. Uh, I think well, there's a real like naive. And and the, you know the other the other big supposed killer app of Bitcoin. You're in a third world country. You want to send money to some. You know, you're in a first world country. You want to send money to your grandma in a third world country. It's really easy to do with Bitcoin, like because transaction costs are really low. There's no there's no quote unquote taxes, which don't seem a lot like we would call them bribes. I think, but it's. <laughs> I, I don't know. In the third world, it's kind of hard to tell what uh, what's what. I mean, they're they're usually sort of big import duties and fees and things on, on this stuff. So, so Bitcoin is a, is an efficient way to basically get money uh, around the world, and and that's surprisingly hard. Uh, with anything else. So yeah. Uh, right. So we should we should look at some of the details. i uh, I'm hoping to be able to actually make some transactions in a legit way, and then uh, I mean there there are papers a paper linked in there on how the protocol actually works. Uh, 
yeah, and, uh, and and how it's set up and go wrong. So we will look at some of that next week. Yeah, you, well, I mean, like if you gotta know a guy, that's kind of a weird, it's a weird thing. Right.